Hello YouTube, in my last video we had discussed how to find the trig functions of any angle theta so long as we know a point x, y on its terminal side. In this video we're going to discuss what happens if the terminal side of our angle actually lies on an axis. Okay, So for instance, uh, if we were to look at, again, like my last video, if we had some angle, say theta, we'll call this our angle theta here, and it's in standard position. As long as we know a point x, y on the terminal side, we'll call it some point x, y on its terminal side, we could have dropped down an altitude here and said, well, this must be the distance y according to our point. This must be the distance x, and we called this distance r. Uh, and, and using that, we could actually say, well, then the sine of theta would be y over r because of our angle theta is here. We'd say opposite over hypotenuse is y over r. Of course, cosine of theta would be adjacent over hypotenuse. In this case, we get x over r the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. And last but not least, we say tangent of the angle theta uh, would be opposite over adjacent, which in this case are y over x. I'm actually only going to list out these three over here because I know that to find the other three trig functions, they're just the reciprocals of those. But essentially, the question that we're posing in this video is this. What if I have an angle, like 180 degrees, that actually falls on one of the axes? As a matter of fact, we could say our angle would look like this. Uh, so the thing here is this, I've got 180 degrees, but the question is, uh, do I have a point on the terminal side? Because according to our definition here, we need to know. We need to know two things in order to find the six trig ratios of this. We need to know a point x, y on the terminal side, and we need to know the value of r, which we say is, in general, always the square root of x squared plus y squared. So really, what we're missing here is a point on the terminal side. The nice thing about it is, <clears throat> it doesn't matter what point we pick off of the terminal side, so long as we have some point that lies on the terminal side. So for instance here, we could choose the point right here. And as a matter of fact, maybe I'll call this the point negative one comma zero. Could I have chosen the point negative two comma zero? I mean, is it also on the terminal side of this angle? And you know, it certainly is on the terminal side of this angle theta. So here's the deal. When it comes to evaluating the trig functions of what we call the quadrantal angles, those are things like 90, 180, 270, 360, or any angle that falls on an axis, the way we're going to encounter this or, or confront this is just to use the same definitions that we had used before. So let's start with this. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Example 2a, it says, let's do this. Let's find the six trig functions of the angle theta, which happens to be 180 degrees. So what we're going to start with is this. We're going to sketch a picture of our angle. As a matter of fact, we say 180 degree angle or pi radians, that would just be right here. So we say theta. Theta is not a mystery to us this time. We actually know that it's 180 degrees. What we need to do now is we need to find a point on the terminal side. Okay, so a point on the terminal side. In this case, I am actually going to use the point negative one zero. Now, in past videos, or the past video, we were able to take from this point and drop down an altitude and make a right triangle out of this. The thing that makes this a little bit more unique is this, there is no triangle in this situation. As a matter of fact, uh, we can't even drop down an altitude from this uh, the angle that we've sketched here because it's not even in the air. So here's what I do want to recognize at least. We know a point on the terminal side, x, y. So what this means is we know that x equals negative 1, and we know that y equals 0. Now, by definition, r is the hypotenuse of our triangle here, but it's also the distance from our terminal point, uh, or our point on the terminal side, back to the origin, back to 0, 0. So if that's the case, we say, well, what would be the distance from here back to 0, 0? Given that r is always positive, we would say the distance here is 1. Well, how do I know? Well, I counted. Like, I went 1 to the left. I mean, that's how I found it. But how else could I find it? Well, the simple fact is we could find it using Pythagoras just as if we'd done it in the past with the right triangle. So just because I don't see a right triangle here doesn't mean that I can't say, well, that r is equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared. The fact is we know a point on the terminal side. We're well equipped to do this. So we say negative 1 and 0. If we were to go ahead and simplify this through, we say, well, negative 1 squared, that becomes 1. And 0 squared, it just becomes 0. So in essence, we say that r is actually equal to the square root of 1, which is just plus or minus 1. And actually, we said we're going to keep the positive 1 when it deals with r. So to find the six trig ratios of this, we'll just go through and use our definition. So for instance, we say sine, cosine, and tangent. This is always good to do is just set up your fraction bars because they're all ratios. But <clears throat> to find sine, remember sine is y over r. So the y value of our point in this case happens to be 0. 
and the R value we just discovered is 1. So we get 0 over 1. In other words, the sine of 180 degrees, which actually, now that I think about it, I'm sorry, I should have put 180 degrees in each of these. Uh, 180 degrees, 180 degrees, 180 degrees. But to find the sine of 180 degrees, we used our y over r definition. We find out that you know sine of 180 is actually zero. We can actually show this uh, on a calculator. If I were to say 180, I'm in degrees mode right now. But if I say 180 and I take the sine of this, you'll see that we do indeed get zero. Furthermore, if I wanted to find the cosine of this point, remember cosine is x over r. So we say the x value of this point was negative one. Y value of this point is one. So we get the sine of 180 coming out to be negative one or the cosine of 180 coming out to be negative one. So again, if we were to grab a calculator and say, pull it over here, we say 180, I want to find the cosine of this. So I hit cosine, you notice we get negative one. So the nice thing about this is I don't need a calculator to evaluate the trig functions of quadrantal angles. We could just use our general definition down here on the left. So last but not least, we say tangent. Now this is important. We say tangent of 180, tangent is y over x. We notice that the y value of our point here is zero and the x value is negative one. So we do get this to come out to be zero. The reason why I say this is important is because now what we need to go do is find the reciprocals. So we have these as being the cosecant of 180 degrees, the secant of 180 degrees, and the cotangent of 180 degrees. So all we need to do is flip over our original three ratios. The reason why I mention this is important is because while well, we say, well, what is the reciprocal of zero? So when one considers what is the reciprocal of zero, well, let's just say this, well, we could put it over a one, but if you flip this over, what you get is actually one over zero. If we were to flip over our original ratio, which was zero over one, uh, we would get one over zero. This is undefined, okay? So it is possible that a trig ratio, which we got here is one over zero, is undefined. As a matter of fact, it's more common than you think. The thing I want to mention here is this. If say sine is equal to zero, the reciprocal of zero is always undefined. The next question I want to ask is this, well, what do you think the reciprocal of undefined is? Because by definition, anything that's undefined is just some constant C over the number zero. If you were to flip this back over, again, flip this back over, let me switch colors here. We say you get zero over C, but zero divided by anything equals zero. So this would be a zero. So the reciprocal of undefined is always zero, and the reciprocal of zero is always undefined. Okay. So we say, well, what about the secant? What would the secant be? Well, we'll just take our original ratio, which is one over, or negative one over one, which is negative one, we'll reciprocate it. So the reciprocal of negative one is negative one. And then last but not least, we say, well, if I know the tangent is zero, what's the cotangent? Well, the reciprocal of zero is also undefined. And again, just notice that I could have flipped over our original ratio here to obtain this, negative one over zero, which is indeed undefined. Okay, so we're gonna do this again. Do this again with example 2b. Uh, but essentially, before we do it, what I'd like to do is this. Let's put in some steps that we could follow here. So I don't know if I can let's put in some text. Oh, my goodness. That's big text. We don't need that big of a text. So we say, I don't know. How about we go down to six-point font? And I say, I want to find. So we say, uh, steps in evaluating trig ratios of the quadrantal angles. So in order to do this, what we'll do is this. We'll start by sketching the angle. So sketch the angle. That was the first thing we did, sketch the angle. The second thing was this. We find a point on the terminal side if one is not already known. So, you know, if we already know a point on the terminal side, we'll use it. But if we don't have a point on the terminal side, we'll have to find one, okay? Uh, the next thing is this, uh, find x and y, which we did in the last step, and use to obtain r, which was our hypotenuse length, or the distance back to the origin. And then the last but not least, we say evaluate using x, y, and r. So these are the steps we're going to take in order to do this. So I'll switch back over to my pen tool now. We'll take a look at what would this look like if I wanted to say find the uh, sine, cosine, tangent, cosecant you know, secant cotangent of 270 degrees. So again, our first step would be to do this. I mean, if we're, if we are, um, sorry, I get that out of here. If we're following steps, we said sketch the angle. That's what I wanted to do first. So sketching the angle, we say a 270 degree angle in standard position, well, would start on the positive x-axis and rotate 270 degrees. So here's our 270 degree angle theta. 
What we're going to need to do next is find a point on the terminal side. Now, you'll notice I don't know a point on the terminal side, but just like in the last example, if you notice up there I use negative 1, 0. If I get to pick any point on the planet that I want, I'm inclined to pick a point that's not that far away from the origin. As a matter of fact, I would pick this point. We'll call this the point 0, comma, negative 1. So nice, we've already obtained an x and a y on the terminal side. We say now that I know x and y, let's use this to obtain r. Now I do want to mention this. Recall that r is the distance from this point back to the origin. And if anybody's counting here, we say, well, this is really just one step away from the origin. Uh, but in order to find r, again, we could use the Pythagorean theorem. So we have this. We say r is equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared, where in this instance we say x is equal to 0 y is equal to negative 1. We're still searching for r. But we can plug these in down here. We say, well, x is 0. This is negative 1. r, then, is the square root of 0 plus 1, which is the square root of 1, which is just plus or minus 1. But again, with r, remember, we always keep the positive on r. r is always positive. So to find the six trig ratios now, we just made it really easy on ourselves. As a matter of fact, we say sine of theta, which is y over r. We would get uh, y, which is negative 1, over r, which is 1. So the sine of, I almost made the same mistake again, the sine of 270 degrees, I apologize, is uh, negative 1. Okay, so we say let's do the cosine of 270 degrees. I'm going to make sure I fill that in this time. Of 270 degrees, how about I clean that up a little bit. The, sine, the cosine of 270. Now this is x over r, so our x value here is 0 over our r value 1. So in this instance I get 0. And then we'll find the tangent of 270 degrees. The tangent of this would be y over x, and in this case we say the y value is negative 1, and the x value is 0. So we notice in this case we get a tangent value that is undefined. Okay. So now that we've got all of our ratios here, we've got sine, cosine, and tangent, let's go ahead and find the reciprocals of these. So we say cosecant of 270 would be the reciprocal of sine. Well, if sine was negative 1, then cosecant is also negative 1, which is the reciprocal of negative 1. If cosine of 270 is 0, then the secant of 270 degrees must be the reciprocal of 0, which is undefined. Okay? And then last but not least, we, we say the cotangent of 270 degrees, which was, you know, formally tangent is y over x. We say, well, reciprocate this. We got negative 1 over 0. Well, now we'll get 0 over negative 1. Or we could just say the reciprocal of undefined is 0. So this is how you would find the sine, cosine, and tangent of the quadrantal angles using our general definition of the trig functions. Cheers.